And these first ones are really for Johnny. Okay, you know Johnny is uh, uh, plays in a band and he plays keyboards. And there's people dancing in front of him. He gets this crowd all excited. And there's a certain type of music that people dance to and they jump up and down. They kind of do this, this kind of stuff or something. Um, Just like that. So yeah. the interesting thing is, remember there are only six failures of floors in the study. Three of them were reported to have dancing occurring. <laughs> okay. Now I don't know if that's statistically significant or not. It, and in, in, in the forensic investigations, the few that I've been able to get, don't seem to cite dancing as a cause of the failure. But it might be a factor. Okay. Uh, here, here's an example here. Uh, this happened, uh, often these things, parties occur uh, near university settings like Boulder, Colorado. This was an apartment building here. They had a dance party on the third floor. And the floor fell through to the second and the, the, all the way to the ground. <sighs> Luckily, the, the two units underneath were vacant at the time, or they weren't vacant, but the people weren't home. <laughs> and because they would have certainly been killed. Okay. Uh, there were a number of injuries here, but no one, no one died. Uh, this is the inside of the building. You kind of see some floor trusses there. Standing across there, people were jumping up and down on these floor trusses. And definitely there, there were. There are anecdotal reports that people were jumping in unison. But the forensic report makes no mention of it, and the forensic report was done very poorly in this particular structure. And I think that, and, and, and there was some politics that in this town, they really wanted to blame everything on those students who are always having big wild parties. So the students got the blame on this. They didn't blame the building at all. And they put all the blame on the students. And uh, you know, how dare you have a party with so many people in the room? It was simply a residential building designed for 40 pounds per square foot. It was definitely overloaded. The question really is, is, is did the dancing add to the problem? Uh, there's another example. Here's a kind of a view from the top, the hole in the floor from the third floor. Okay? So this is another one. This is a church in uh, in British Columbia, Abbotsford, British Columbia. This church, the floor was designed for 100 pounds per square foot, and they had a Christian rock band on it. And there is actually video of the people doing this and then falling through the floor. Uh, although still they're saying in the forensic investigation the dancing had nothing to do with it. It was just a, you know, weak trusses or something like that. Uh, but it is kind of interesting that uh, if this is something that I notice, and if this occurs over more year where I have more data, I wouldn't present this in front of a Congress because I don't think I could defend this accurately. But it's something to, 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 that looks a little fishy here. That dancing is somehow related to it. So Johnny, when you're hitting those keyboards hard, uh, if you're on a wood frame structure, a light frame structure, you might want to make sure your stage is not where the hole is going to be. You know what our goal is. Okay. The other thing is, it, 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 it is I know we're building a deck out there, so I talked about deck construction a little bit. And as I mentioned before, um, decks fail most commonly with this connection of the deck to the building. And here's the deck down here. This was actually a casino in uh, Montana. Now, Montana casinos are not like casinos in Vegas. They're kind of country clubs kind of things where they have a few slot machines. Um, but anyway, there were a lot of people partying on this deck, and it suddenly collapsed. A lot of people were injured. Uh, there was a lawsuit over this. Uh, uh, one one uh, woman collected about $700,000 for basically a broken ankle. Uh, the, uh, but I want you to look at this. This deck is still very much intact. And notice that it, sh it not only fell down, but it shifted out a little bit. So there's actually a mechanism how some of these decks collapse. And this is a good example. Uh, this here is a picture of the deck on the ground. A couple things to notice. First of all, the people were having fun, lots of beer cans and stuff. Uh, but notice the ledger. There's a ledger board that's, that's bolted to the side of the building. Okay, and the bottom half of the ledger board, these are 2x12 joists and 2x12 ledger boards. 
they used two by eight joist hangers, so the joist hangers only came up about halfway, a little more than halfway. And there's a row of bolts in the ledger board that's connecting the ledger board to the building. So the ledger split horizontally. You can see the bottom half of this 2 by 12 is still connected, and all the hangers are still connected, and the top half of the ledger is still on the building, <coughs> you know, with the bolts up there. Okay? So when you're done with here, go up there and look at our little connection and see what you think. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. No pressure. No, yeah. no, no pressure. So this is the morning after photo. We, I, I suppose we can have a party and all do like this on that deck and see, how, see if my theory is right. Johnny can play the keyboards. It'd be perfect. Uh, so anyway, this is the mechanism of, of, of a failure here. The, the, the uh, ledger board split right at the line of bolts. They were at mid-height here of the 2 by 4 They were all in line. So one of the things you want to do is take your bolts and stagger them up as <laughs> if you can. You also want to make sure your hangers do go all the way to the top of the ledger board, which our deck does. Um, and this is the mechanism of collapse. Once this, this joint fails, the columns here kind of tip over, and the deck kind of goes down and often pulls away from the uh, building itself. So there's this, this hinge mechanism happens with the column and the beam here, and you get this situation with the deck. So anyway, that's the end. That's all I have. Any questions, comments, uh, you know, shoe throwing, or whatever? So are you tracking? This year? Yes, yes. And in fact, we're already about 350. So uh, so it appears that last year was maybe a law year. <coughs> but I don't have enough years to really say it's accurate. Have there been code changes due to any of these disasters? No, I don't think so. I, none of these, first of all, none of them resulted in large number of deaths. None of them got the uh, big press. The biggest press was actually the failure of the Metrodome, the football stadium. And that was a fairly minor failure. Some snow came in. But they had to reschedule you know, an NFL game. That was a big deal. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, yeah, most of it, this is fairly minor. So it's happening at a low frequency. And there's no real pattern here. There is a growing awareness. And this has been true for a number of years, that decks are a problem, and building departments are being told to inspect decks better. And if you try to get a permit for your deck, you may find the building department is looking at your plans more carefully than they would have 10 years ago. Anything else? Yeah. So those cloth roofs? Yeah. Um, how often do they replace them? You know, it, uh, well, well, first of all, DIA is a little special. DIA uses the, the very best fabric. It's, uh, DIA uses a, uh, 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 Kevlar, fiberglass coated Kevlar. It's like the most expensive material you can have. They, their stuff is real good. But generally, they replace them when they start to tear. And if they get a lot of tears, they might decide to replace the whole thing. There's a stadium in Toronto that they've re replaced the, the roof three times. So often people assume that these fabric things will last outside for 50 years or 30 years, and a lot of times they don't. Uh, some of them are using lower cost vinyl materials, and those vinyl materials definitely don't last long. Probably have, you're lucky to get 10 years out of those. There's also two types of fabric covered structures. One type of fabric covered structure uses air pressure to inflate the building. And another type has uh, a typically steel trusses, arch trusses, that are ribs. And they're maybe spaced at 12 foot on center, and they have some pipes going in between. And the fabric actually rests on the, on the metal structure. Um, and some of the failure is in the metal. It's not always the, the fabric. But the fabric seems to, uh, when you have a plywood roof on a building, and Johnny will tell you on his research himself, adds a lot of redundancy to building and the fabric doesn't do some things that other roofing materials do to kind of uh, make the building act as a unit. Uh, okay. Yeah, but, but both of those kind of buildings, both the air supported ones and the frame supported ones, both seems, seem to fail at a higher frequency than typical buildings. The other thing is that I would say a lot of the fabric covered buildings are very innovative designs, you know, like DIA. And <coughs> and when you <coughs> when
when you're at the leading edge. You'll have problems. Okay.